I designed and created the very first 2DSi XL. And let me show you how I did it. Have you ever asked yourself why the 2DS is peak handheld design? Look at it. Flawless, no hinge to get in the way and inevitably break. The buttons are just perfect for gripping and it doubles as a doorstop. So I made it bigger. This is the 2DS i XL. I've recently fallen in love with the 2DS design and the thought of turning everything around me into a 2DS has begun to plague me. So I ripped apart my childhood DSi XL and started modeling. Modeling was the first hurdle. Prior to this, I'd never touched a 3D modeling software in my life. I think the most I've ever done was open up Blender and look at the gray cube only to panic and exit out of the program. But it's never too late to learn, so I watched a portion of a couple of tutorial videos explaining the basics of Onshape, purchased the cheapest caliper I could find, and began modeling. My process was pretty straightforward. If I could take the aesthetics of the 2DS, that being the iconic wedge, and tailor it to the original dimensions of the DSi XL, then everything should just slide into place. The only thing that was vastly different was the shoulder buttons and the ports. Since I didn't want to solder anything, I cut a slice out of the back perpendicular so that I could comfortably fit everything there. Not only did this make it easier to execute, but it ended up being much more practical. I took partial inspiration from the POW Kitty design with their integrated triggers. The hardest part was honestly the face buttons. I couldn't take the dimensions directly from any of the existing buttons because of the way they interacted with the original shell. And since my shell was completely different, the buttons had to be too. So getting the dimensions of these right was not the easiest. In fact, they aren't entirely correct now, but they function and I had to draw the line at that. It isn't perfect, but all the STL and CAD files are free to download in the links in the description. All I ask is that if my design was helpful to you, hit that subscribe button. I was recently gifted this Ender 3 printer, and over the past month, I have been learning the basics of printing. So I can't say this is my first printing experience, but aside from toy sloths and flexi slugs, this is the first time I've ever printed something this intricate and custom. I began with this black filament I have way too much of, and once I was confident enough to start polishing things off, I decided to experiment further with other filaments. I was very tempted to purchase a resin printer, as this would offer an almost perfect shell design, but due to time and logistics, I didn't think it was viable for this project. But I did still want to attempt a transparent print. Although it isn't perfect, I think it's very close to the transparency of my Japanese exclusive 2DS. You can still see the layer lines, but I was unable to get the prints to come out any clearer, so this is still something I need to master. The filament I used was the Overture Red Transparent PETG. It's close to the other Japanese exclusive colorway of the Pokemon Fire Red 2DS, so I'm gonna claim that was intentional. Throughout each print, I physically tested each component and made slight adjustments to the model to try and hone in the design. But for the most part, everything fit into place after four or five tests. I just wish my Ender 3 was a bit faster because the bottom shell took a minimum of 12 hours and the face plate and buttons were an additional four hours. So if I made a mistake or a print failed, it sent me back a whole day. That's why I did not print another shell to fix this rough backing. 12 hours later and the print failed, so I said screw it. Oh, and by the way, if anyone tells you to try sanding your print for better clarity, test it out on your sample first before your final print, because then you might just end up ruining your shell. The models definitely need some polishing, and I can foresee myself returning to the project at a later date, but I just spent so much time on it that I was close to burning out creatively. For now, I need to move on to other things, and I think this project has enough stability to be viable for a final print. If I was to come back and clean things up, I would work on cleaning up the button heights even more, which was a nightmare in itself. I would also clean up the screen cutouts and make sure everything fits more evenly. I don't believe my cheap caliper is entirely accurate either. I'd also add a bit more stability into where places screw in place instead of having to jerry-rig it and tape things. My ideal outcome was to have everything ready for an at-home project, but if you're wanting to take on this task, there are some parts you're gonna have to customize on your own. Nonetheless, here it is in all of its janky and squeaky glory. This was mostly a test to see if I could get the concept to work so I could possibly do this to a new 3DS or new 2DS. I just didn't wanna take the risk in wrecking a 3DS in case the entire thing backfired. I plan on working to polish these skills more with these types of projects, so let me know how I did in the comments and what else should I make 2D? Have a great one.